Hello, welcome to Dinner at the Jerome's. My name is Dr. Brian Jerome, and during the next few minutes, we're going to see where all this food comes from and how it relates to food chains and food webs. In other words, we are going to study what eats what. I like to come to the dinner table with a good appetite because I want to sample many different types of food. When we feel hungry, we know it's time to eat. Hunger is the body's way of telling us we need food. We need food to live, to walk, fish, and do all the things we enjoy. Food gives us energy to do all these things. Food is also sometimes called energy. All living things, including humans, plants, and animals, need energy or food to survive. Besides energy, animals have other needs as well, such as water. Animals also need a place in which to live. Seals and sea lions live in and around the ocean. Deer live in the forest and people live in houses. Humans and many other living things need many things to live. Food is one of the most important. Have you ever thought about where all the things you eat, such as broccoli, come from? Or lettuce we eat in salads? Or tomatoes? Or fish? Or turkey? And where does pumpkin pie come from? Or how about the milk you drink? Where do you think it comes from? Plants, such as these growing alongside the ocean, and animals get their food or energy in different ways. First, let's take a look at a plant called broccoli. Believe it or not, broccoli grows on a green plant. Broccoli is a plant that makes its own energy from water, gases in the air, nutrients in the soil, and the sun. Plants like these flowers are called producers because they produce their own energy. People eat lots of things that come from producers or plants, such as apples that grow on apple trees. Baked squash, seen here, comes from this vegetable that is attached to this plant. And even popcorn comes from a plant. It comes from the ears of the corn plant. On our dinner table is a salad that is made up mostly of lettuce. Lettuce is the leaf of the lettuce plant that can be picked. In some places, lettuce grows in large fields. Another common plant that we add to salad is the tomato. Tomatoes grow on plants like this one. While plants can make their own energy, animals need to get their energy by eating other things. Consumers are animals that eat other things. These horses are eating hay and are called consumers. These beautiful butterflies are consumers and eat nectar from plants. Animals that eat just plants are called herbivores. Many herbivores, like sheep and cows, eat grass. Other animals, like trout, eat food such as this insect. Animals, like this trout, eat other animals and are called carnivores. Carnivores are meat eaters. Animals that seek out other animals to eat are called predators. This bear is a predator eating other animals such as squirrels. Prey are the animals which serve as food for other animals. 
The bear's prey includes mice, snakes, and other animals. Some animals, like us humans and bears, eat both plants and animals. Animals that eat both plants and animals are called omnivores. Many animals, such as bears, are omnivores, eating both plants, such as wild grapes, and eating animals, such as squirrels. Food chains show what living things eat. We call it a food chain because each living thing is linked to the other like links in a chain. We can make a picture or diagram that shows what different living things eat. We call this diagram a food chain. Let's start with a simple food chain. Earlier, we said that broccoli is a plant that gets its energy from the sun. We can pick broccoli, cook it, and eat it. This food chain diagram shows with arrows where each living thing gets its energy. Here, the sun gives the broccoli plant energy. The broccoli plant gives people energy when they eat it. The broccoli is a producer and the human is a consumer. Another example of a simple food chain involves lettuce. Lettuce is a plant that gets energy from the sun. People then pick it and eat it in things like salads. This food chain diagram shows that the sun gives the lettuce plant energy. The lettuce gives people energy when they eat the lettuce. The lettuce is a producer and the human is the consumer. Let's look at one of our favorite drinks, milk. Milk comes from cows. Cows eat plants such as grass and they use the energy from the grass to make milk. Farmers milk the cows with special machinery and then we drink the milk. This is the end of the food chain. This food chain is a little longer. You can see the sun gives the grass energy and then the grass is eaten by cows which create milk that we drink. In this food chain, grass is a producer with the cows and people being consumers. Let's look at a carnivore, a trout. Trout tastes great. Trout live in streams where many plants make their home. In this stream live many different kinds of small plants shown here. These tiny plants are often eaten by small insects that live in the water. These insects are also eaten by trout. The trout are sometimes caught by humans and then are cooked for a meal. In this food chain diagram, we can see that the sun provides energy to the tiny plants, which are eaten by insects, which are eaten by trout, which then are sometimes eaten by people. The plants are the producers, and the insects and the trout and humans are consumers. Now the main feature of our dinner, the turkey. Sorry to say, but this turkey was once a bird that lived on a farm or in the wild, such as these in this flock. Turkeys are omnivores and eat both plants, such as corn, or they eat insects, such as grasshoppers. Let's suppose our turkey ate grasshoppers. And grasshoppers most commonly eat plants. These animals put together in a food chain look like this, with the sun supplying energy to plants, which are eaten by the grasshopper, which is eaten by the turkey, which is then eaten by humans. The plant is a producer, with all the other animals being consumers. I've had enough to eat for now. Why don't we take a walk before having dessert? There's a pond nearby that I'd like to show you. Let's go. This pond is home to many different kinds of plants and animals, and it's a great place to study who eats who. There are many different plants that live here, including cattails, shrubs and trees, and lots of small plants that live in the water. Fish commonly eat plants in the pond. Beavers 
with strong jaws and large teeth also eat plants, such as trees, and use them to make their houses as well. Salamanders, which also live in this pond, can also feed on plants. Crayfish will also eat small fish and salamanders, as well as many different kinds of plants. This raccoon is an omnivore. It eats fish, salamanders, plants, and even crayfish. All this eating is represented in something called a food web. A food web is like a spider's web. It is made of many different strands woven together. A food web is made of many food chains. It is a better picture of what really occurs in nature. This is a diagram of a food web. Each arrow shows that energy or food is eaten. You can see that the plants serve as food to fish, insects, salamanders, beavers, crayfish, and raccoons. Insects are eaten by fish, crayfish, and salamanders. The raccoon can eat the fish, salamander, crayfish, and plants. And the crayfish eats small fish, salamanders, and plants. Our food web is missing an important living thing called decomposers. Decomposers, like fungi, work to break down dead plants and animals. Without decomposers, dead things would never decay or rot away. Decomposers are at work in many places, like in your kitchen on foods like cheese, bread, and fruit. Decomposers in the pond act on plants like cattails and on dead fish as well. The decomposers at work here are small living things called bacteria that you can't see with the naked eye. In fact, a single glass of water contains thousands of bacteria. Our food web looks like this when we add decomposers. Notice that all the plants and animals can be broken down by decomposers when they die. The decomposers return important chemicals and matter to the living plants and animals in the pond. It's been fun looking at life here in the pond. Let's head back to the house and have some dessert. Mmm, pumpkin pie, my favorite. Take a minute to think about how pumpkin pie fits into food chains and webs and talk about it with your teacher after the video. I hope you've enjoyed dinner here at the Jerome's and seeing how different foods fit into food chains and food webs. I am sure it'll give you something to think about next time you sit down for dinner. Now let's take a few minutes to review some of the things you learned while watching this video. Just fill in the blank with the correct word when you hear this tone. Good luck and let's get started. Number one is also called food. Number two, plants make their own food and are called Number three, are animals that get their food by eating other things. Number four, animals that eat just plants are called Number five, animals that eat both plants and animals are called <coughs> Number six, 
Number six. This diagram is called a food Number seven, are animals that eat meat. Number eight, this diagram is called a food Number nine, break down dead plants and animals. Number 10, food chains and food webs show how living things get